You don't see me, <laughs> so Nabila has no opinion. Uh, if you can't see me, you're going to need to go out and come back in. It's funny, or you're just being polite. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, this, this is my, my, my contribution to the uh, using humor in the classroom. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. Yes, yes, yes. Can most of you hear me okay? Too loud, too soft, that kind of thing? Let's do the tech check. Slavka says okay. I was just chatting with Slavka in Tiesel, Jordan on Facebook. And this, this is why it's so beautiful. This is We are the beautiful side of globalization. You know the nasty side of globalization? We are the beautiful side of globalization. Yes. Okay, you can hear me good. You can see me okay. Right, Slavka? How cool is that? That Slavka and, and I, that we're meeting in Tiesel, Jordan to promote Vicky Vicky's video. I just love this. I love this. I love this. Yes. So you can see me and hear me okay. I'm glad I'm glad to know that. Uh, and you'll be glad to know that you're not going to have to sit here and look at me dressed like this uh, for the next hour. Uh, I have decided uh, to ask the presenters to come in later so, you know, I can introduce them and say hello to everybody. People coming in, coming in, come on in. Welcome, Sylvia Sylvia in the house. Oh, and there she is. What perfect timing. This is what I was trying to do. <laughs> do you know this woman? I'm, try I'm stealing your thunder here, but only for a moment, no, I promise. No, no. <laughs> I will exit stage left. More okay. juvenile. Blanca says I've gotten more juvenile. Okay, well, wait, let I have an answer to that. First, I don't think it's possible for me to become more juvenile than I already am, for, number one. Number two, as I pointed out, I am doing this in the spirit of using humor in the classroom. Carissa, are you okay with that, right? Valid, the valid approach. <laughs> it is so important, uh, whether you do it intentionally or you take it for granted and you're just a funny person, using humor in the classroom, pfft, can't overemphasize that because, you know, humor is fun and fun means better learning and, right? It's kind of an obvious thing. What maybe not so obvious is techniques you could use, especially in specific areas. So Carissa Peck, she's amazing at using humor for all kinds of things, bringing her own stories and own funny things into the classroom and getting the students to do the same. But she's going to focus today on pronunciation and how humor can help do with that, and I will just turn things over to you because I'd love you to explain a little bit about who you are. She's a great blogger. You've got to check out her blog if you haven't already. That's how I, I found out about her through Sylvia Sylvia. Uh, I found out a lot, lots of great folks through Sylvia, so thanks for that, Sylvia. And uh, yeah, I'll yeah, go Sylvia. away and you, yeah, oh my goodness. Uh, speaking of things that we cannot uh, overemphasize enough. Uh, Carissa, I'm going to disappear. You need me. You just summon me, and I'll be back. Got it. Carissa Peck, English language teachers worldwide. Okay. So to start, um, I don't actually know how much Jace told you. I am from, and as a result of being from San Diego, I have a habit of speaking very, very quickly. Uh, even speakers have problems with understanding sometimes. So if you notice that I am speaking and you just don't understand what I'm saying because it's happening so fast and you really don't know what's going on, it's okay. I promise you can either say something or just check out the recording later. That's why I wrote a lot of the stuff on the PowerPoints. Um, two, I feel very, very weak when it comes to teaching pronunciation. Uh, so why on earth would you volunteer to talk about pronunciation? Well. I think that as teachers, we should constantly challenge ourselves. We should try to make it so that we get better at things we're not good at, not just getting better at things that we're already good at. So I decided that I would go ahead and delve into the world of pronunciation um, and see how that goes. So pronunciation and the punchline. Thank you again, Mary Reed, for helping me with that title. Okay, Jace already touched on some of the benefits, and a lot of the other presenters have touched on some of the benefits, but quickly, some of the benefits of teaching with humor. Ooh, is not that. Okay, laughter is the shortest distance between two people, um, and that was said by Victor, uh, I never say his last name right, um, 
Borg, maybe. He is an awesome comedian. Uh, he passed away, but he actually has a great sketch where he talks about how English would be easier to understand if we had sounds for punctuation. Um, so that worked well. But laughter is the shortest distance between two people. And you know what that means? What is, what is he trying to say here about laughter? Laughter makes us friendly. Laugh has great interpersonal skills. Yes, thank you. It's something that really adds to the community. Um, you don't need to understand. It's true. When I was little, I can recall smiling at um, people that did not speak English with me, but we still were great friends because we could smile and laugh at whatever was going on. Eisenhower has said that the art of leadership, the art of getting along with people and getting things done is humor. It's having a sense of humor. So even if you're not happy, even if you hate being a comedian, just recognizing that sense of humor is something that your students and that you will need to have. Um, and finally, Mark Twain, whom I love, he was the great thing, the saving thing after all. The minute it crops up, all our hardnesses yield, all our irritation and resentment slip away, and a sunny spirit takes place. Um, I taught in Korea, and Korea tends to be known as a very serious place. Um, but one of the first jokes I understood in Korea was when someone told me that my principal was called um, Mr. Tomato, because when he drank, he turned bright red. Okay, despite being very, very serious, I instantly recognized that all of my classmates were um, awesome. All of my teachers were awesome. They were actually all really cool, right? It, it really let me know that things were going to be okay and I shouldn't be scared. So, Okay, but teacher, I mean, yeah, sure, funny is fun when they're like five, but I, I teach university, I teach college students, I teach business English. Okay, Forbes magazine has said, as others have pointed out, that we need humor in the workplace. Okay, and they made a list of why we need humor in the workplace, and it's all the same as why we need humor in the classroom. It boosts morale, it increases productivity. Okay, we want students to be happy working. We want students to come in the class. Yeah, awesome. We don't want students to come into class saying, oh, gosh, again. Right? We don't want that. Uh, Nellie, I'm going to talk about how I look later. It'll, it'll come up. Um, it also increases productivity. Okay, so this way we don't have students coming in and it takes them 10 hours to do one assignment, right? It, they're doing it. They're productive. They like what they're doing. Okay, it builds trust. If we are telling them, hey, trust me, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to tell you a joke. Then they can trust us a little more, which helps us work together. Okay, it puts others at ease, right? It helps them relax a little. Uh, um, definitely. You are less stressed if you are amused. Again, I teach business English at a university. Um, I also teach at a high school. It's really highly ranked in Mexico. A lot of my students are taking Chinese, French. They have their philosophy and other humanities courses in English. They have a lot of issues. They have a lot of stress. And if you can get rid of that, if you can reduce some of that, it helps, okay? It helps them be better in class. It's awesome. Um, it allows your company to stand out, according to Forbes, which means it also helps your class stand out. Okay, it means that they're no longer worried about their eight other classes. They can locate you. Ah, yeah, that's right. This is the class where we do this. This is the class where our teacher makes us laugh. Um, it's also a key ingredient in creativity. Uh, creativity is awesome, and we all want it in our class, but we have problems sometimes. Um, as Jay's pointed out, I teach in Mexico. And I teach in a city where most of the students are from the same background. Um, so when you're asking them questions and you're asking them to work creatively, they, they tend to work and come up with the exact same answers. And if you use humor in the class, it, it helps unlock the brain a little. It, it helps open it so that students are more likely to give different answers. OK, and finally, it makes people more approachable. It really humanizes people, which someone else pointed out in the pre-class activities, and I was glad to see that. Um, 
so that's it. That's why we should use humor according to Forbes. Um, of course, there's a lot of other reasons we should use humor, but I like to use this business example because it's showing you that it's not just for little kids. Okay. So how about the research? Originally, I had like 20 slides of research because I love research. And then I realized that not everyone loves research as much as I do, and I would bore the hell out of you guys. So three quick slides on a few different research things that support using humor specifically in the classroom. Crashin, so earlier mentioned the effective filter hypothesis. Yes, yes, and yes. Um, check out this girl. Does she look thrilled to be in my class? Would you be super excited to teach her? No, no, she does not look excited at all. Um, so according to Krashen, does he say that a bored student will learn well or a bored student will not learn well? I'm seeing a lot of Bs, a lot of will nots, a lot of no's, and you're right. That's the basic of a lot of the effective filter, that if a student is bored, if the student is anxious, if the student is conscious, they're not going to be learning. And that's one way that humor can help. Humor can step in and make it so that the student is not as bored. The student is not as anxious. The student is not any of those other feelings that we don't want in our class. Okay, if we want to look at someone other than Krashen. Um, I am not being a good clicker today. Let's try this again. I, I don't usually use PowerPoint, guys, so this is fun. Okay, listening. We want students to listen to us. Okay, we want students to actively listen to us. Oop, 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 oop. My bad. Okay, are you more likely to listen closely if you think someone will say something unexpected or you think you can already predict what will be said? I know that we have tuned out of things, right? We have been listening to our mom talk for the 20th time about how people are mean on Facebook. Yes, mom, I know people are mean on Facebook. I know, I'm sorry. And about halfway through, you just stop listening and you start thinking, gosh, I wonder what I could do with my students for the TOEFL because, you know, we've already done it. Oh, is my mom still talking? And our students do the same thing to us. So, research by Lilleberg and Thurston, who wrote a great book called Using Humor in the Classroom, or something like that, um, basically said, give them a reason to listen, okay? If something funny might happen at any moment, they listen. When they listen, the teacher becomes more effective. We want that, we want our students listening, we want our students actively trying to figure out what's gonna come next. Okay, final research for today, because I don't want to bore you guys. I wish I could talk more about that, but we'll move on. Um, I think it's Ramal basically said we want to keep it relevant. Okay, we want to tie things together. A lot of people have talked about how they don't know how to plop a joke in, right? You don't want to just throw a random joke into your class. You want it to be relevant. You want it to have something where it is related to what you're talking about. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do that, and that's what we're going to talk about in a second. Okay, but we've been talking about all these advantages, all of these things that we absolutely love. Let's be honest. I don't want to use humor in the classroom, and there are reasons for that. Yeah, there are some disadvantages. Ooh, awful PowerPoints, Carissa. It won't be a serious thing. Okay, Charles Churchill said that jokes are a very serious thing. What he's saying here was actually, he's a famous satirist. Um, he was talking about the, the breakdown of a joke and how you actually have to tell a joke. But from a teaching perspective, we shouldn't just be throwing in random jokes, right? When we're using humor, we're using it for a reason, whether it be to lower stress or to make it easier to remember a word or to visualize something. So it can become something frivolous, but as long as you're a good teacher, it won't be. OK, 
Okay, so as long as you're actively keeping in your mind why you're using the humor and how you're incorporating it into the class, you'll be fine. I, I think that humor can be a very serious thing. Oops. Okay, it may get negative. A lot of my friends do not like using jokes uh, because they find that they are or they are sexist or they are homophobic, and that can be true. Okay. Um, I agree that jokes can get negative, but as Michael Jordan said, I never thought a role model should be negative. Okay. So you don't model bad jokes. You don't laugh if bad jokes are told. You don't. You explain that you're using jokes that are funny because they're lexical or funny because they're situational. You don't use jokes that put people down, that offend a religion. You never make fun of a student unless you guys have developed that relationship. Um, I know some students are definitely class clowny and you can talk to them in private and if they're okay with it, awesome. But Okay, your class is going to get out of control if you use humor. And that's true, right? We've seen stand-up comedians, and once they start talking, like everyone starts laughing, and even they can't get people to be quiet. You have to have classroom control. You have to, you have to, you have to. And if you can't get classroom control, then you might want to consider a different method. Um, I tell my students sometimes, hey guys, you know what? I thought that we could do this review today, but it turns out that we can't. You know, you guys must have a lot of other stuff going on because you just have too much energy for this. So, you know, take out a sheet of paper and we're going to do something else. Now, that doesn't mean that we're punishing them. It just means, hey, this, this isn't being constructive right now. So we have, to, we have to switch to something else. I've also had classes where we just couldn't do games. We couldn't do activities um, because they would get too out of control. And so we had to do other games where they were sitting and other games where they were writing or games where everyone had to do 10 push-ups beforehand just so they got tired and they wouldn't be so off the wall. Okay, I saw a few more disadvantages people pointed out, so really quickly we're going to step on those. Uh, oh, but teacher, we have to explain the joke and then it's not funny. I disagree. I find that explaining a joke can be funny. Um, I also find that if you pick the right joke, then you don't have to explain it. And we're going to look at that. Okay, different types of humor. If we have the class clown, if we have the person who is goofy and ridiculous, yes, that is definitely a way of humor. And as people are pointing out, it's a natural humor, right? Um, we were teaching, I was actually, the first time I really started teaching jokes in class was last spring. I guess it was before that, but one big time was last spring. And I asked a student, um, what do we call it when, or how, how does a bunny stay in shape? There we go, how does a rabbit stay in shape? And the rabbit says, you know, they're like, wait a minute, teacher, what, what's stay in shape? Okay, good, good question, you know. What is stay in shape? Um, it's what we, okay, let's look at Taylor Lautner, guys. You know, from Twilight and how he's always on the cover of magazines without a shirt. Okay, well, why, why do we call that? You know, when he's out without a shirt and he has all those big muscles. And they say, hey, Photoshop? Okay, that was natural funny. That wasn't a planned funny. That was something that my students did and they're silly. Okay, but sometimes we want our humor to be more planned. Sometimes we have jokes that we can specifically work into the class and it's awesome. Okay, we can wear something funny. We can do something ridiculous. However, you don't want to distract from the class. So try to make sure no matter what it's tied in. Okay, so what can we actually teach? What in pronunciation can we teach? We've got a little alien. The alien say when he wanted a bedtime story. Okay, aliens usually say, take me to your leader, right? So this time it's, take me to your reader. Ha, ha, ha. These are cheesy. I know they're cheesy. Students still like them. Embrace it. Where do frogs leave their hats and coats? Okay, now sometimes you can walk teachers. Sorry, students. I'm stopped. Do I need to enter and come back? Chase? Azid? What's going on? Oh, am I back? 
Okay. <laughs> Yay, I think I'm back. Everyone can hear me? Can I get smiley faces or yeses or somethings? Okay, awesome. Sorry. Technology hates me sometimes. I'm going to blame myself there, but who knows. Um, okay, so we can, going on with that, although now I think I've lost uh, my PowerPoint. Eeks. Okay, well, I, I can't slide my PowerPoint thingy anymore, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going. Um, why do frogs leave cat hats and coats? Um, for example, where do, oh, here we go. Where do people usually leave their coats and their hats? And then you would ask students and you might get some answers like, um, the closet or something else. The cloakroom, the check room. Good. Okay, so what kind of sound does a frog make that sounds like cloakroom? The cloakroom. Steve is hilarious. Thomas got it too. You guys are awesome. Okay, and you can walk a joke through like that. Is it as funny? No, not really. But Students get this joke, and then later they tell someone else, and then they're awesome, and they have fun, and it's good times. Um, I think I can do it like... Uh, okay. I can go to the next slide, but I can't press buttons. This is no fun. Oh, oh, oh. You want me to try it? I can try it. Maybe. Okay. No, let me let me try. Sorry. No, no. Hey. I don't know if okay. somehow you got disabled there, but if it doesn't work, just tell me, say next slide or press the button or something yeah, funny. Again, that. Buddy. That, sound, that wasn't funny enough, but anyway, you get the idea. I do. Okay. Um, if you can click then again, Jay, sorry. And again, and again, and again. And again. And again. Okay, so we got the cool room, good. Okay, let's look at one more. So click again, please. Sorry, there's going to be a lot of clicking for you. Why are astronauts careful when they cook? Okay, so we want astronauts to be careful because they're worried about things they'll find, and we'll just jump to the end of this because we've lost some time. Jay's click. In case they find an unidentified frying object, okay, which is a pun on the UFO, you flying, frying. What consonants are mixing up here? What consonants might students mess up that these jokes are pointing out? <laughs> R and L, okay, and again, if you've taught in Asia, then you should know that R and L are something that a lot of students struggle with. Right, Adrian? Okay, so you can use jokes like this that point out, hey, you know, you could really be sending a mixed message if you're not properly enunciating this. Um, I'm going to talk about how to introduce jokes in a second. I promise. Okay, so Jason, I think you want to click three times. Uh-huh. Okay, we can also look at stressed and unstressed. Yes. And the first joke. Okay, we're going to faster. What do you call a fake noodle? An impasta. And the next one. Knock, knock, who's there? Wanda. Wanda who? Wanda who you are too. And the next one. What kind of fish makes piano sound nice? Tunas. Okay, I know that was fast, but basically this goes through and it helps us look at how we're doing something with stressed and unstressed sounds. Right? We're going from a schwa to an ER or an ER to a schwa. Instead of mother, we say mother. Instead of tuners, we say tuna. Instead of etc. and so forth. I wonder, we say wonder. 
Okay, we can also use it with confusing vowels. Can I see the joke, please? Okay, everyone knows what kind of dog that is, right? It's a poodle, which is a funny word in and of itself. Um, so what happens if it's raining cats and dogs? You have to be careful not to step in a poodle. What do you call a cow that can play the guitar? A musician. Um, what kind of, oh, what do you get when you cross a chicken with a cow? Okay, this joke is one of those jokes that I would not teach right away. Okay, um, we do a short story assignment where one of the vocab words is roost, which is where a chicken lives, right, in the roost. I would use this joke the next day to reinforce that word. Uh, so what do you get when you cross a chicken with a cow? Big eggs. I like that, Thomas. And that is actually another point. If a student gives you a joke answer that is not the joke answer you're looking for, but is still funny, laugh. Okay, give them credit. Write it on the board and say, great, but what's another answer? And in this case, we would go back to, um, what's the word you say cow? Do you say I'm going to eat cow tonight? No, we don't say I'm going to eat cow. So what do we eat? We eat burgers, which are made of beef. Okay, and what kind of beef do we have? Well, we can have roast beef. And where does a chicken live? In a roost. So, Jace, can I get a click? Steve's got it, roast beef. Okay, and this would be a nice way to reinforce the vocab word roast, as well as the confusing vowels. And what vowels are they messing up here? We're switching the oo and the o, right? Roast, roast. Did you lose me? You're mute. Jace, you're muted. Okay, I don't know what that was about. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, you didn't hear me? I was just saying no. that I think you have... <laughs> aren't we funny? It's so funny now. Um, <laughs> boy, are we injecting humor. Yeah. I, just, I think you have control of the PowerPoint now. Give it a try. If you don't, then I'll keep doing it. I, I can switch slides, but I can't go throughout the slide huh very strange okay I no know. problem i'll keep doing it okay sorry okay so once again the vowels no it's not just the clicking it, it won't it's weird but it's this is the o and the o okay, so next this is probably one of my favorite jokes in all of times and it's horribly lame and pathetic um but this is looking at, uh, I believe, a combination of things. It's Lincoln. So if I can get some clicks, please. And one more. OK, Charles Dickens walks into a bar and asks for a martini. The bartender says, olive or twist? Olive or twist? Ha ha. OK, um, the next one, please. When is a door ajar when it is open? A jar, a jar, very similar sounding, and my favorite joke of all times. A string walks into a bar. Bartender says, I'm sorry, no strings allowed. He goes outside, messes his hair, tangles himself up, walks back in, and the bartender says, aren't you the string I just kicked out of here? To which the string replies, no, I'm afraid not. Okay, fade is when some strings are like that string is in the picture. Okay, now the great thing about this longer joke is that there's the clear Lincoln, there's afraid not that gets linked in. But there's also other stuff, okay? He goes outside, right? We wouldn't normally say he goes outside. Um, he goes outside, walks back in, and the bartender says, not and, and a, right? So we can look at other examples of linking. I'm, I'm not a big black humor fan. I like my humor, smiley and happy. Okay, so this case we're looking at, um, I believe, consonant vowel linking. Can I get in there, click, Jace? Yay, I got it right. Okay, and the next page. Good. Okay, this time we're going to look at more linking. Click. 
but it's going to be with different ones. Like, what's the most depressing day? Saturday. Aw, Saturday. Saturday. This does the D and the T, and it's also linked. Uh, click. Knock, knock. Who's there? Scold. Scold who? Scold over here. Please let me in. Um, that's a classic joke. Somebody else actually used it, uh, but it works, right? We see that we're dropping things. Click. What do you call a camel with a flat back? This is the link to the camel, guys. Hump free. And this is consonant constant linking, right? The S and the C, um, the D and the D, the R and the D, the P and the F. Okay, so we see how these consonants link together. Click and click. Okay, this is when we're missing something. How does the moon cut his hair? Eclipse it. Okay, next. Please. How do fleas travel? They itch, Ike. And knock, knock, who's there? Ooze, ooze, who? Ooze and charge around here. So what are we missing? What sound gets lost when we say these? H. It's when we drop the H, which happens a lot in English. So you use these examples, and then the students get better. Next, please. <laughs> One more. OK, sometimes we're missing more than just the A. Knock, knock. Who's there? Iris. Iris who? I rest my case. I just can't explain any more. OK, click. Who do vampires tend to fall in love with? The girl next door. Click. Knock, knock, who's there? Less, less, who? Must go see a movie. Okay, so here we're not missing H's. Are we getting missed? What's getting dropped? T's. Okay, so this is when our T's get dropped when we're combining words. Um, Sorry. Okay, and sometimes it's more than one, right? It's when we have a combo. So the first joke is, knock, knock, who's there? Abby, Abby who? Abby birthday to you. Yay. Maybe if you didn't get the jokes, it's okay. Most of them are really lame. And I will be explaining more of them. We're just going fast. Uh, what do you get when you cross an elephant with a rhinoceros? Elephino. This was my favorite joke when I was little. Okay, so we're mixing an elephant with a rhinoceros. Elephino, hellifino. That's probably as perverse as my jokes get. I said hell. Yes, yes, this is, this is the worst joke that I've ever used. And knock, knock, who's there? Avenue. Avenue knocked at this door before? Cute. Okay, so these are combinations. We see that there's connected speech and there's elision. Elision is when we drop sounds. Yes, avenue, haven't you? Good. Okay, so a lot of people have said, all right, but where do you get these? No, I'm sorry, not yet. What kind of jokes? Yes. Okay, we've seen a lot of jokes. We've seen knock, knock. We've seen the short jokes. We've seen the stories. We've seen, just keep clicking through. What do you get when you? And we have our excerpts from TV shows. Joyce, can I get that video from Joey or from Friends? Got that one. The other one. Ah. I don't know if we'll have time for that one. Yellow. Um, when a guy breaks up with his girlfriend, what is an appropriate amount of time to wait before you make a move? Oh, I'd say about a month. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's say three to four. Half hour. <laughs> Interesting. When it's your assistant, I would say never. All right, Rach, the big question is, does he like you? Right? Because if he doesn't like you, this is all a moo point. A moo point? Yeah. It's like a cow's opinion. You know? it just 
Doesn't matter. It's Moo. Okay, I actually use this in my business English class when we talk about a moot point. Um, if a moot point, it means that it's irrelevant. But Joey drops the T, right? He says it's a moo point. Okay, that's funny. It's also funny if you're looking at it from a conversational point of view. Because earlier, he says it doesn't matter. Okay? He does not pronounce the T there, and that's okay. Later, he doesn't pronounce the T, and it's not okay. And I agree that friends is not always culturally acceptable. I assumed it would be okay with this group, but... You guys are the teachers, you find out what's culturally acceptable, and you find out what best goes. Okay, you find out if you need to talk about um, something beforehand, if you need to introduce something, that's, that's part of what you're doing. Okay, where are they? Um, you can find lot jokes online. The internet has so much available. Um, I went on Amazon today and I took a look at all of the free Kindle books and I put them in that. Um, I love Kindle books because I don't have internet at home, so I can download them when I'm at work and then I go home and I read them and it's awesome. I can highlight the ones I want, I can change them however I want to, it's perfect. Um, so I went ahead and I put all of the free books I could find on that page. Please, 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 if you are going to download these, double check that they are free. Usually, Amazon has limited um, time periods for free, okay? So just because it was free for me this morning does not mean it's free later. I know I don't have internet connection at home. My students think it's wacky too. With this, I'm still managed to get my educational fix at home. Um, there's also memes. For those of you that do memes, there's a meme called Bad Joke Eel, and he tells really, really bad Really, really bad corny puns, which are perfect for my class. And then there's tons of people on Twitter. Um, for example, I just read a story on a book by the guy that has the Twitter best puns. He has a book out right now with about 750 puns. To be honest, I don't like all of them. I wouldn't use all of them in my classroom. But you can get them for free on Twitter, and then you're set. So they're all over the place. And click. Okay, again, Google, free joke sites, and you will get way more searches than you can ever search. So you will be fine. You will be perfect. You will be amazing. It's your job to find the jokes that work best for your class, that are culturally appropriate, that are at the right level. Click. Okay, and a lot of you have touched on this in the pre-course and now, so let's hit it now. How to make sure a joke is funny. Students should be familiar with the vocabulary. Now, does that mean you're going to do it pre-taught, or you're going to do it before class, or at some other point? However you want to do it, but students should be familiar with the vocabulary. The structure should be the grammar that they understand, or simplified. And the cultural reference, if present, should be something that you have explained, or that is similar to their culture. So be appropriate. So here we have the early worm gets the bird. Okay, that's not how it goes, right? The saying is supposed to say the early bird gets the worm. And that unexpected point is what makes it a joke. Ha ha ha. Not my funniest, I know. And it also has some pretty cool um, vowel to vowel connecting. The early worm turns into the early worm. So, but if you were going to teach this, your students would need to make sure that they already knew. The early bird gets the worm. Next, please. Okay, so here's a joke that um, I altered to focus on the b and the p sound. Okay? So, sorry, Jace, there's lots of clicking in this one. If you want to just click through them all, I can do it. Yeah. So there is a poor t Oh, this joke will not be funny at first, I promise. Uh, if you find it funny at first, you're weird. But we'll talk about it in a second. So... A poor teenager named Benny was crying because his partner had dumped him. A local witch, called by his tears, appeared to help. Benny, she said, since you are so depressed, I will give you this magic. If you grow a beard and never cut it, 
you will be rich and people will worship you. However, all magic has a price. If you cut your beard, something very bad will happen. Pitching away all of his razors, Benny swore to never shave again. Later, Benny, having grown into a handsome man, was rich with a beautiful spouse and precious children. On the day of his daughter's wedding, his wife begged him to trim his beard. Immediately after cutting his beard, he became an urn. Okay, this is not funny. There is no punchline yet. But before we talk about the punchline, we can see that we went through and we changed into the buh and the puh. Okay, there is some vocab here that they might not be familiar with. Okay, trim, shave, etc. Um, can I get the next slide? Thank you. So in the end, the pun. We need to know what an urn is. Okay, an urn is basically a fancy fancy vase, and the moral is a bunny shaved is a bunny urned. Ha ha ha. Okay. Now that plays off of the proverb, a penny saved is a penny earned. And we need to know this proverb. If the students don't know this proverb, the joke is not good. Okay, they need to know the vocabulary. They need to understand the story. Pitched, earn, shave, penny, trim, etc., etc. Right? It goes through the minimal pairs. It goes through a lot of stuff. And this is long. It's just like a reading section. You could use it as a reading. Okay, how do you use jokes? Well, you can adapt a different activity into a joke. Um, click. That's me in high school, by the way. Okay, I like using it kind of as a bonus. Click. Okay, for example, they come in and it's the attention getter. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. Um, a bell ringer. Do you guys do bell ringer activities? Bell ringers are essentially activities where they come into the classroom and there's already something on the board. Um, and so because there's something on the board, they sit down, they get with the partner, they get with whatever, and they start working on what's on the board right away. And that way, when they come into the class, they're ready to do everything. Okay, they already kind of have themselves prepped. They've already kind of have something. So you could put a joke on the board as a bell ringer. Um, next. As a hidden answer, and we'll look at what a hidden answer is in a second. So next. Hidden answer. I'm actually not a huge fan of these, but this was done a lot when I was younger. Um, this would be with vocabulary from the Gift of the Magi. The Gift of the Magi is a story around Christmas time. Um, so with younger students, you might just do something like a word scramble. I'm not a fan of word scrambles, but if you are, awesome. So you would have the word scrambled next to it, boxes, and they would have to rewrite the word correctly. At the very, very end, they notice that there are numbers and that these numbers go ahead and they give them a secret answer. The secret answer is at the very, very bottom. Um, Nellie, you're right. Kids love these. I use this a lot, actually, as bonus papers. If they finish early, they can do one of these. But So what does Frosty think about Los Angeles? And if you answer it, it would go snow. Snow business, show business. Okay, I would use that for the secret answer, where you don't really need it, but it's a bonus. This would be my attention getter if I was going to read a spooky story and maybe we needed to know some spooky vocabulary. Then I would use jokes like, what kind of monsters eat the fastest? Goblins, which is an example of reduced speech, right? Gobbling, goblin. How do devils tell their fortune? With their horoscopes instead of horoscopes. So we changed the schwa to the ER. With whom does the ghost go on dates? His girlfriend, right? Where we change the R to a schwa. Now, if you are the type of person or in the type of environment where you feel that Halloween should not be mentioned and that any reference to the devil is inappropriate, clearly you would not use these jokes. But I do tell scary, scary stories in my class, so these jokes are appropriate. Um, Okay, adapt an activity. I shamelessly stole this for this example. If you were in Jennifer's class, she did a great activity on unk and unk, right? The ng and the nk. 
well, roughly. Um, I had never seen that activity before, and I said, hey, you know what? I could easily adapt this so that my students would laugh. And I did it very easily. I just added a few lines, and I talked about Justin Bieber and how he has fangirls. Um, my students would instantly think it was hilarious now. Uh, they, they love any time I talk about Justin Bieber fangirls, and I do have Justin Bieber fangirls in my class, and the Justin Bieber fangirls take it in stride. They are okay with it, okay? So I shamelessly stole this from Jennifer. If you are interested in the original activity, please, please, please check out Jennifer's blog. Uh, it was awesome. Um, but essentially, this is just an opportunity to show you how you can take an activity that's in your book. You can take an activity that you got from someone else, and you can make it your own. You can make it something funny. Okay. So even though there's no joke in here, there's no punchline, I know my students well enough to know that they would think this activity was hilarious. They would love arguing about, should Justin Bieber get his fangirls to help him? Okay, they, they would think that was great. Um, so this was a way that I personalized the activity. Um, and again, the fangirls are okay with it. Okay, so this is my cat. He helps me when I grade. So discuss it, okay? You can take something like that and then you discuss it afterwards. That's a way that you make a joke a reading or a writing or a speaking activity. And another kick. Okay, a lot of you have talked about sequencing the joke, right? You cut it up into strips and then the students have to put it in order. Awesome. All right, maybe you give them a one-liner and you tell them to write a script. You tell them, hey, you know, tell me a situation when someone would use this joke. Perfect. Adapt the pun and write their own. We're going to talk about that in a second with prank phone calls. Click. Do a dictagloss. If you don't know what dictaglosses are, I love them. I'm addicted. Um, send me a message. I'll send you some links. But dictaglosses are awesome with jokes. I think I got one more. Answer questions about it. Okay, it's pretty much what I already said. Discuss it, i.e., what story is it like? What is it similar to? Should Justin Bieber attack his fangirls? And et cetera, et cetera. Next. And this is just a superfluous joke. Why did the cat go to school? to become a first aid kit, ha ha, instead of first aid cat. Okay, as a listening activity, first of all, when we are learning pronunciation, okay, we definitely are learning, I know, Steve, they're awful. Um, we're definitely learning listening, okay? They go hand in hand. But you can take turns telling jokes to different partners. Um, I've read about a lot of teachers that do this. They have to reach into a cup at the beginning of class, they take turns telling jokes, they identify them, whatever. You can have them identify different words in a pun. This helps with blended speech, if they can hear that even though it sounds like one, it's two. Um, you can have them stand up or sit down when they hear a sound or word. For example, if I was listening to the b -p joke earlier about Benny, I might have them lift up a blue pen or a blue marker when they hear b and a purple pen or a purple marker when they hear puh, okay? So then you would sit there and they would go, a bunny shaved is a bunny earned, right? He was depressed, whatever. And that helps them listening and you can see visually if they're listening and normally they mess up at least once, which is good because it keeps them on their toes. Um, you can have them circle words when they hear them, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Play a game. I am addicted to a game called Fly Swatter. I have never found a circumstance that I don't like it. You can go through them all if you want, Jace. Um, basically, you divide the class into groups, usually less than three, and you have different possible punchlines on the board. You get one volunteer from each group, arm them each with a fly swatter or an old newspaper. They turn away so from the board, so they're facing the teacher, and the teacher will start a joke. So then they have their fly swatter and they turn around and they try to punch the punchline. First person to punch the punchline wins, right? Yes, exactly like snapping cards, just with a fly swatter, which they like. Um, actually, another teacher has my fly swatters now, otherwise I would show you. Uh, the bonus of this is that if the students can't find it, but their group can help them, they can shout out things in English to help. So if you're reviewing directions, it also helps, right? Higher, higher, left, left, to the right, right, no, there. Um, perfect. Um, the, they want a point, it's great. This is also great to do with interactive whiteboard because 
you don't need to write them all up and they get smeared and stuff on your whiteboard, but it works fine with anything. Next. Okay, shamelessly stolen from Jace, again, with adapting. Not an activity where they add sample dictations and then students would write their responses and eventually create dialogues or stories. Great activity, great to look at linking and shrinking and blending in other ways that we form speech. And you can use this exact same activity when you're working with jokes. Click. Okay, for example, you could give them, what time did you go to the doctor? At 2.30. Okay, they have to listen to things like, did ya? So they still have that connected speech. Okay, so let's talk about it as a speaking activity. I love tacos. So who can say the joke the fastest? This seems ridiculous, but it does help them get their mouth moving and they learn to pronounce things better. Okay, take turns telling jokes to different partners. We talked about that before, but again, click. Act out the pun. Do something in where they're making an act or they're actually acting it out like taboo or something. See if students can make a joke chain. Okay, joke chains are something that I love, but you really have to have students that have a lot of jokes. Um, for example, I would tell a joke about a cannibal who was a clown. Okay, why don't cannibals like eating clowns? Because they taste funny. The next person would either tell a cannibal joke or a joke about a clown or a joke about tasting something. And then you go on and on and on and on. Um, I have done these with fellow teachers when we have been waiting for buses, and they're lots of fun. Um, click. Have a speech competition with jokes. Instead of having them do poems or having them do dialogues, have them tell jokes. Um, we recently had a drama festival here, and I told um, my head of the department later that I really wished that they would have um, taken other students up to be MCs for little sections, right? So if an MC would give, you know, one or two jokes and then sit down, that would be a great way to incorporate other students into the task and they could also prompt this, um, their blended speech. One more. Okay, let the students be stand-up comedians. Let them stand up in front of the class. Maybe have each student tell a joke every other day. Um, they like it. They like the center of attention and they have a chance to rehearse and practice and make sure that they sound right. Almost done, I promise. Okay, prank phone calls. I'm sorry, I'm running a little long, but Bart Simpson. Everyone knows Bart Simpson, right? And he's famous for his phone calls. Ah, Jace is so psychic. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'd like to speak to a Mr. Tabooger. First name, Ollie. Oh, Bart, my first prank call. What do I do? Just ask if anyone knows Ollie to booger. I don't get it. Yell out, I'll eat a booger. What's the gag? Oh, forget it. Okay, so here, Ollie to booger. Sounds like I will eat a booger. I'll play it again booger. now that you said that and explained it. I'll eat a booger. One more time. I'll eat a booger. Oh. oh. Uh, yeah, I'd like to speak uh, yeah, to a like Mr. to booger. To... First name, Ollie. Oh, Bart, my first prank call. What do I do? Just ask if anyone knows Ollie to booger. I don't get it. Yell out, I'll eat a booger. What's the gag? Oh, forget it. Ollie. Oops. Okay. I actually, wait, that oh, again. Yellow. Uh, yeah, I'd like to speak to a Mr. to booger. First name, Ollie. Oh, Bart, my first prank call. What do I do? Just ask if anyone knows Ollie to booger. I don't get it. Yell out, I'll eat a booger. What? Okay, so prank calls. Um, can I get the next click? Can I hand out prank call phone names after they understand the concept? Yes, this time the joke is on Bart. Like, I need a bath. Right? You don't want someone to say, I need a bath. I need a bath. I need to booger. My car. Um, and then the students make prank phone calls to one another, right? So they have their little pretend. And then they're practicing the speaking to one another. 
and they can identify what the name sounds like. So they know that I'll eat a booger sounds like I'll eat a booger. They know that I need to bath sounds like I need a bath. They know that Mike R sounds like Mike R, my car. If this class is actually learning the rules of blended speech, why? If they're not, like a lot of people aren't, then we move on to see if they can change the last name and come up with another funny name. Okay, so instead of Ollie to booger, could they change it to Ollie to cat? Ollie to snot? Whatever. Students have fun with that one. Okay, I know some of that was fast. I'm sorry I didn't explain it all, but if you have any questions, um, I just wanted to show you a lot of different ways to do it. So, tweet me, ESL Carissa. Um, find me on Facebook, seeing activities. As I stated before, I do not have internet access outside of work, so my responses are slow. Sorry. Okay. Um, I don't have much time left, but are there any questions? We do. Or... I, think I, I gave you a little extra time mm -hmm. because I think it'd be great, great to take questions. I love this picture. Your 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 cat is is def is definitely uh, representing. That's actually the least miserable I could get him to look. <laughs> he really looks like he really looks like he was forced into this. I uh, have uh, touches from that picture. Yes. He looks, yeah, he looks like right when this is done, he's gonna claw your face or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take those things off me. You're getting a lot of claps here. I think this is chock full of great stuff. And you don't have to worry about it being fast because people can watch the recording. Right. People can check out the slides because we'll put them up. Uh, and But I think a, a few questions right now would be good. I have a, a, a something I really want to point out, but I'm curious to see if anyone else will ask about it because it's something I saw uh, people were a little concerned about what you were doing, just about using humor in the classroom. So was it, was it? I saw some of the questions about classroom control and losing control. Was that's a good. That's not the one I'm thinking of. That's another one that's really important. But let's see if um, they just can't stop thanking you. But once they're done <laughs> with that, thank you so much, guys. I'm, I'm sorry again. It was so fast, but it was fantastic. <laughs> it was great. Absolutely great. Um, so, what questions does anyone anyone have right now? We can take some. Nope, no, nope. never any questions at the end, just during it while I'm ignoring them all. Thinking, you know how we got to give our students time to think and type. I do, five minutes, technically. <laughs> That's fine. Well, we can continue. It's funny, Carissa, I, I, I always have to remind myself she doesn't home because she doesn't, it doesn't seem that way. She's, I guess when she gets on, she's very efficient. Uh, do you only teach at college? No, I teach I high school and college, and I have taught preschool, and I have taught, um, I, I've taught primary, I've taught pretty much everybody. Great. Another question? Yes, um, uh, as far as Sylvia, um, I have internet access at work, and we have the three-hour siesta for lunch, so I get most of my stuff done during lunch. And, and nice mustache. The, the mustache is... Is I don't fun. want to distract from people earlier, but and actually briefly, um, Nelly earlier said something about how I look like I'm in college. I actually got carded to go into an R-rated movie the other day in America, which <laughs> means people think I look under the age of 17. Um, so this is the good thing about being juvenile. As you get, as we get older, uh, it's, it's not it's not so bad when people think you're younger. It's not, but it does mean that the first two weeks of class, I am mean. I am not a nice teacher the first two weeks of class because Smart. I don't want them to fall into that comfort zone where they they don't listen to me and where I lose control. So normally the first few weeks, um, it's really if they break a rule, we, we talk about it right away. They can't get away with much the first few weeks because otherwise I can't do fun things with them. Otherwise it, you it gets out of control. You wait a few weeks before you start rocking the mustache. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. yeah. I do have the mustache headband that I use right away, but that's for them. If they do something good, they get to wear it like a sir. <laughs> nice. 
great. Mm -hmm. um, well, I want to point something out. It's not really a question. I, I, I really want uh, Carissa here when we talk about it because it's a really important one. What I, what I saw uh, people saying, and I hear this all the time myself from teachers I train and do development workshops, how, how do we you know, get humor? It's hard, enough, hard for us. We're not native speakers. Uh, or even if our English is, is really good, we don't know the culture, so puns. I mean, if you try to understand puns in another language, uh, even if you kind of understand them, you just can't feel them the same way. And the answer I have for you is you do not have to be the person delivering it. So what Carissa is doing is two things. She's amassing them, right? she's putting them together, she's categorizing them in this amazing way you know, for shrinking and linking, or these vowels, or these consonants. Uh, and that's something you could do, or you don't have to do, because she's doing it. And actually, I used to do this too. So, Carissa, I've got to share with you, I have a huge inventory of jokes, and I know a couple other teachers that do. So, this is the future, where we'll be able to put stuff together. You won't have to, you know, find this stuff yourself, unless you want to. Number two, maybe the most important, is the pronunciation of it. And this is something that I feel Carissa, myself, and other people in the future could do also, right? We can record them. You could play mm -hmm. them. Because it should not be on you <laughs> as teachers, unless you want it to be, to be the one who is delivering these jokes. And I'm, I'm not saying that, please don't misunderstand, that I don't think you could do it. If you want to do it, do it. But if that's you don't, the fact that you are so insecure or that you feel that you aren't doing it properly is affecting the way that you do it. There are ways around it. Not to mention the fact that when you bring in other input, you're, you're exposing your students to other speakers, uh, you know, and it, maybe it's important that it's a native speaker. Maybe it's not, but it's, it's you're bringing in um, other input. Really important. This is something I, I, I'm very familiar with because of the songs I make where teachers say, I don't know how to rap. It's like, wait a second. You don't have to do that, right? You bring you bring this in. So it'd be great, Carissa, to talk about how we could get you to do some podcasts or do some readings of jokes and other people could participate in this. And that way, we can make this resource available and teachers could bring it in just the way they bring in a song or bring in a conversation uh, or, some, or a video clip, that kind of thing. What do you think about mm -hmm. that? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and I mean, you can also get a lot of clips of jokes and the similar from TV shows, from um, movies, where if you're already going to use a video in class, you just might want to use a video where they've already incorporated something that you can bring in. Yeah, I was thinking this exactly. Thank you for remembering to say that when she showed the Friends video. As long as you understand what it is, even if you're not sure, <laughs> you could do it yourself, right? You mm -hmm. can bring it in and you don't have to be the one who's who's performing, right? To go, I just want to say my thank yous to Carissa. I think she's an amazing teacher and I know she can do lots and lots of different things because I've seen what she can do. So it'd be great to have her back for our next MOOC in March if she'll agree to come. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice to see how many people came out today. And I know we'll have a lot more watching the video. And please check out the pre-class task if you haven't done it. You are not oh, the last 20 seconds, the, the pre-class task, guys, I, I love your responses. I love how much of yourselves that you've brought in and how much you're telling me of actually what went on. Um, I am trying to comment on those. And if you do see a comment, feel free to answer. Uh, I'd love to get more details on a couple of those. Yeah, let's make those pre-class chats, dialogues, back and forth, back and forth. We'll post the post-class task, but first I'll be posting post-class tasks from uh, Justin Murray, uh, Aju Fajera, right? Uh, so in the meantime, uh, you can check. We're doing five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Goodbye from New Jersey, Carissa. Bye to you in Mexico and bye.